We left off here at ribosomes. Now let's talk about the Golgi body. Oh, we left off here at ribosomes, but I forgot to give you my little analogy. Remember, we're talking about cells being like a factory complex on Mars. So the ribosomes are a little bit like little robots that are busy building things. And what are they building? They are building uh, proteins. Some of the robots work here at the rough endoplasmic reticulum, but there are other robots in other parts of the factory complex that are also building proteins. The Golgi body is like the packing and shipping department. The Golgi body also gets called the Golgi apparatus, so kind of like Golgi whatever, and it is like the packing and shipping department. When the rough endoplasmic reticulum has built a lot of these special proteins for export, then the rough endoplasmic reticulum, its membrane kind of looks like someone's blowing, kind of blowing a bubblegum bubble. And then that big, big, uh, that balloon filled with special proteins that need to go to the surface of the cell membrane, that actually gets walked by a special mailman protein here from the rough endoplasmic reticulum, that bubble gets walked over here to the Golgi apparatus. And that particular part of the cell, that organelle, is going to put the finishing touches on the proteins. It modifies the proteins and uh, finishes them off. And then it'll blow a bubble again. And that little membrane here will get walked to the surface of the cell. Those little bubbles that go from the rough endoplasmic reticulum to the Golgi apparatus or from the Golgi apparatus to the surface of the cells, those are called vesicles. Vesicles are also organelles. So here's a picture of a transmission electron micrograph showing vesicles arriving at the Golgi apparatus and other vesicles starting to leave the Golgi body. So like the packing and shipping department. Ooh, mitochondria. Mitochondria is so cool. Um, what is cool about mitochondria? When we get to a later lab, you are going to learn about how the DNA, the genes that you inherited from your mom and dad, they're in a code. And that code that the DNA in your nucleus speaks uh, is recognizable as the code that eukaryotic cells know how to decipher, right? But the prokaryotes, particularly the bacteria like E. coli or whatever, they've got DNA inside of them, but it speaks a different language. It has a slightly different code. Well, it turns out that these little organelles inside of eukaryotic cells, plants and animals called mitochondria, these guys, they got little bits of DNA in them that, that label those cells as being the descendants of ancient bacteria. Make sure you know that. I think it's on next week's quiz. Mitochondria are the descendants of ancient bacteria. So it's as if, okay, over here, this pink thing on the left, that is transmission electron micrograph of a eukaryotic cell. All of those blue dots, those are ribosomes. Uh, here we've got the nucleus and the things that are orange, those are all the mitochondria. So there was a big cell at one point in life's journey on planet Earth that swallowed up some of these mitochondria. And instead of killing them and eating them, the cell decided, hey, I'll let you stay alive inside of me if you will share the energy that you make with me. So mitochondria are descendants of ancient bacteria. That is called the theory of endosymbiosis. What do mitochondria do for us? They make a form of energy called ATP. Now, the way mitochondria make ATP is by a process called cellular respiration, and we've got a whole lab about it, right? That's how important it is. Um, and they're the descendants of ancient bacteria. Great, so your cells give these little guys, these little orange guys, give them sugar or something like that to eat. And the mitochondria goes, great, I need oxygen, I need this sugar, and I'm going to use those to make ATP. Some of the APT, ATP will keep me alive and the rest I will share with you. 
This is just a close-up of that same picture where you can see the nucleus. There's the nucleolus. Um, and these orange guys, those orange guys, those are mitochondria. Now we zoom up super close. Here is a mitochondria. The shape of mitochondria is a little bit random, actually. All right. Now vacuoles. Vacuoles, okay, technically, technically there are some animal cells that have small vacuoles temporarily, but for the purposes of Bio 120, the vacuole is an organelle that is found in plant cells, and it is really important for plant cells. The, the vacuoles inside of a plant cell are very large. What do they do? They store water. The water that's stored inside of a plant cell is important for allowing a plant cell that's part of a larger plant, like a, like a rose stem, to be strong enough to hold the heavy flower upwards. When the, when the vacuole runs out of water, that is going to cause a rose or a daisy to wilt. Give it water again and it will go back up. So one of the jobs of a vacuole the vacuole also stores bitter chemicals. The vacuole is used by some plants to store chemicals that are meant to keep animals from wanting to eat that plant. So mint, the flavor of mint is actually a chemical that's stored inside the vacuole and is supposed to keep us from wanting to eat mint. Well, actually, Probably you wouldn't just go and eat a whole mint plant, but you would harvest some mint and use little bits of that minty flavor to flavor something like your iced tea. Sometimes these vacuoles will store poison. Like there are plants that deliberately make poisons to punish animals for eating them. And that would be stored there in the vacuole. Vacuoles are in plants, but not animals. This is bio 120, yeah. Animals don't have them. And it's what makes lettuce crisp when there's enough water. Cell walls. Plants have cell walls, so do funguses, but animal cells do not have cell walls. And the cell wall of a plant cell is just outside of the cell membrane. So here, this like darker green line that I'm trying to draw the pointer along, that is the cell membrane, that is the plasma membrane. Oh, you can see it right there. And the cell wall is on the outside of it. So if a cell is a little bit like a water balloon, then animal cells are just like a naked water balloon. Plant cells are like a water balloon that is inside of a shoe box. And that shoe box, is um, part of the structure of the plant cell. Chloroplasts. Chloroplasts are found in plant cells, but not in animal cells. And they're like a solar power generator. In our uh, factory complex on the moon, a mitochondria would be like an electrical generator that you need to pour gasoline into so that it can make electricity. But a chloroplast in a plant cell is like a solar generator. Now, it is going to use sunlight and water, and that will allow it to make sugar. And then the sugar in a plant cell would get fed to a mitochondrion. Okay? So chloroplasts are found in plants. It's also found in a type of life called protestins and we will be covering those late in the lab. All righty, so we're going to stop there and we're gonna start mitosis with the next video.